computers. What we now know as desktops, laptops, tablets, or smartphones were originally calculators. Some early computing machines were so large that they filled entire rooms. Mechanical contraptions used to solve equations, track stars in the sky, and assist with navigation. Early iterations of computers would use punch cards, gears, and shafts. The first wooden punch card was used in a loom to automatically weave fabrics in 1801. Moving on to relays, punched film, and vacuum tubes. Finally, using transistors, switches, and integrated circuits, what we now know as CPUs, the brain of the computer. We use base 10 relating to numbers 0 through 9. Computers function using a system called binary. Binary is base 2 with 0 and 1. Computers are filled with transistors and switches. So this relates to their base state of being either off or on. So they quickly switch and that is their code, is ones and zeros. Originally taking minutes to solve a single equation, now a computer can process over 2.9 billion operations per second. Computers have taken us a very long way. The first calculator being the abacus. Then there were mechanical devices, then they became electronic. And finally, they became incredibly compact and efficient. And that's where it brings us to today. The technology is advancing rapidly. There are some scares about technology and what it can lead to and the problems it may cause. But Socrates, a famous Greek philosopher, had concerns about paper. To paraphrase, his idea was that this new technology, being paper, would make it so people would become forgetful because they will rely on written notes and not practice the muscle of their mind. As time progresses, there have been lots of ideas about the development of technology and how it will affect society. This series will attempt to explore this. As computers became more advanced, a way for them to communicate between each other was developed. Cables. A local area network is a low number of computers connected to each other within a small area. A wide area network is a collection of connected local area networks. The biggest wide area network being the internet. If a device is connected to the internet, it is therefore connected to every other device using the internet. To connect all of these billions of devices, there are thousands of miles of cable laid across the world, some across the sea floor. There is a connection starting in California, ending at Singapore, Hong Kong, and various other Asian countries that is 12,000 miles long. Wireless internet that is commonly used in homes works by using radio frequency signals rather than wires. There is also satellite internet, where a dish sends signals to a geostationary satellite, meaning it keeps up with the rotation of the Earth, so it appears still in the sky. And then it beams it to a different location on Earth using a positioned arm known as a tria. Although it's not as fast as viper optic, which uses pulses of light, therefore working at the speed of light, it does not require physical cables between a satellite dish and the tria, so it is widely available. So an internet connection can be provided to a location where it's not viable to lay cables, such as the desert. All of these technological advancements, which once helped us solve equations or to make tasks, track stars and navigate the planets have led us to be able to instantly send each other cute pictures of animals, videos of people having accidents, and memes. It has connected the planet. Where it once took months to send a message across the world, now it takes less than a second. Before computers existed, you would have to arrive at a physical location to meet people, whether that's a park, a pub, or a class. You would be able to see the person you're talking to. You could see their facial expressions, their mannerisms, and hear the tone of their voice. To speak to someone a long distance away, you would have to send a letter, which could take days or months to reach its location. Carrier pigeons, more accurately homing pigeons, were bred to send mail. Somehow have been recorded to travel over 1,000 miles and at times reaching over 80 miles per hour. For short distances to conversate, there was a time where people used physical methods to communicate such as tin can phones and speaking tubes such as on ships or in hotels. And you see this in parks. There's a speaking tube and a vibration will physically travel down the tube and exit on the other side. Then there were telephones where you had a connection to a phone operator and they would connect you to a caller. That would be for a switchboard. They had actual plugs and they'd plug it in. Now you can connect to someone on the other side of the planet and tell them to uninstall the game because they're completely useless, they suck, they're baiting players and they haven't had a shot all match. Or you can start a relationship with someone that you haven't even seen before, which could be a gamer girl or a creepy man posing as a woman. There are many platforms such as TeamSpeak, Discord and Slack, which can be used to instantly establish a connection to speak to someone, no matter where they are, just relying on their internet connection. Another great creation brought by computers are games. Step aside, chess, checkers, and backgammon, we have Space War and Pong. These are the first games created on computers. 
Computer games are a great way to entertain yourself. It is in a simulated environment, so you can experience things not possible in your mortal state, such as space warfare or flying. Or you could play online dating games where you can live in a virtual world where you're not a complete and total loser. It also streamlines normal gaming experiences, such as letting you play table tennis without any of the setup or physical strain. Today, video games are incredibly immersive, with rich storytelling, high quality graphics, and a great level of control. Gaming has become so immersive immersive that we have created systems that can make you believe that you are in a different environment. So much that people will jump head first at full force into the televisions in their living room, where the immersion will quickly become broken along with their flat screen. Now, computers have done a great deal of good. They've improved our quality of life in some ways, such as automating parts of our daily life. For example, dishwashers, washing machines, dryers, and microwaves. It has sped up development of medicine and given us new forms of treatment, provided us with new types of entertainment, allowed us to present ourselves to the world and connect to people all around the globe. However, it has created a great deal of harm. Computers have a direct link to nuclear devices. The US military dropped two bombs in Japan, in Hiroshima, and Nagasaki. However, they wanted stronger, more powerful weapons to defeat their foes. So to speed up the development of nukes, the US military invested in better, faster computing systems to accelerate their nuclear research. They built a computer so large it filled a room and it crunched through calculations to create the hydrogen bomb. There are also drones that can carry out strikes that kill thousands of innocent people and our robot soldiers that are being developed. Imagine the power of a robot that doesn't need to sleep, it doesn't need to eat, doesn't have any requirements, it just has to have power. It is invincible. It's a robot that can do a backflip, shoot you in the head, and do a epic emote dance on your grave. There are lots of fears around the future of technology, although with every advancement there has been apprehensions about the impact it will have. This is closely related to the fear of the unknown. I like breaking this down to base concepts. Is it good that we are developing? In a lot of ways, our lives have become easier and more fulfilling. People in developed countries no longer have to worry about hunting, gathering, and basic needs. With this, it has come with a lot of destruction. As we take more from the planet to benefit ourselves, it has had repercussions. Up to 200 plant and animal species go extinct every day. The polar ice caps are melting, causing rising sea levels. Immeasurable amounts of toxic gases are released into the atmosphere heating the planet. It can be easy to tie all of this to technology. It was the tools used to cause this harm, but they're just tools. Paper hasn't made everyone stupid. It's the way we use it. Developing technology won't directly destroy the planet. It's the way that technology is used. The way tech is advancing is exponential, and soon it will be going at a rate hard to comprehend. We should be looking into the way people are influencing this development for the betterment of humanity. Imagine if all this progress that was put into destroying each other was instead used to help one another. To summarize, computers aren't inherently the problem. It's the user that's wielding it. In this video, I have challenged my own idea that technological progress is bad. It has and can be used to destroy, but it could also be a great avenue for positive change. So we shouldn't be so concerned about the tool itself, but the people that control it. There could be a future where there are no jobs left, then the world is automated by robots. I personally see this going in two ways, where we stay with our current inequalities, and so the people in power will gain more power and push them high above the rest. And everyone will be pushed lower since there aren't any jobs left. All the work will be automated. And so there will be the people that have power that are pushed to the top, people that have little power that are pushed to the bottom. So if we stay in the current state of, of the way things are and this technology develops, it could either push the divide. There is also another option. Although it's far-fetched because it is difficult to unite the world, we could evaluate the current structure on which our societies are built upon. We could equalize power so that this new automation technological advancement could benefit everyone either Automation will make it so the people at the very top become insanely wealthy and have all the power and everyone at the bottom has to suffer and starve. Or we could use it so technology betters everyone and automates everybody's lives so people wouldn't have to work. We could all rise to a baseline where all of our basic needs are met. So either we could all push for change and hit equality across the board or we'll stick with our current inequality that will be pushed wider and wider until we will have demonstrable inequality. It will be a lot harder to have a revolution when you're fighting robots. I personally wish for a future where everyone has their basic needs met across the world. We have the capacity to help everyone, and yet things like money, greed, and power make it so people are still suffering. We could have all our services automated and have everyone's needs met, and this could create a great baseline for humanity, and I wish for that outcome for the future. So what do you think about this, and how does this make you feel? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.